One interesting point uh, when uh, showed the tax wire to have taken shutting down the command module, uh, we had left left Jack alone on the to get the run powered up. And, uh, somewhere in there, uh, an old stack had drifted down and was uh, perched behind us on sitting on the acid engine cover and protruded up into the uh, cabin. Um, Jack, uh, in his career, was uh, really the expert on the other here. In fact, when, uh, before he came into the program, he was a uh, test pilot for the North American Aviation. And uh, he had worked uh, as kind of the company pilot through the design the development of the command and service line. Uh, so until this time, he had never been in a lunar mine. <coughs> This is the first time ever he's now in this space track. Uh, the limb sounds quite different. It is uh, relative to the command module. It's built like a battleship to handle launch and entry. Uh, the limb is a very light weight for the purpose of performance, a very light weight vehicle. But the flimsy, you might consider it in that respect. Uh, not, there was no inner walls, uh, put forward in the inner walls, so we had many. That was uh, in there to cover up wiring and uh, uh, plumbing. As you can see, you can see the, all the guns that we were heading and just keep us from plumbing and stuff. And it was noisy uh, relative to the command module. We had Kevin Fan uh, near the line. Uh, the glycol pump that ran uh, for the cooling for the electronics, for whatever reason, uh, uh, randomly changed frequency. Made occasionally gurgling noises. Uh, so Jack's comment after he said that a little bit uh, made a comment uh, to, uh, to us that we think this thing will make it. <laughs> and uh, I told Jack, I said, he was mentioning the, uh, the sound of that the winding pump. I told Jack, I said, well, Jack, you stop worrying when you quit hearing those strange sounds. <laughs> Uh, the other thing he said was we were going around the moon, and uh, a little side story of that, uh, they said we could see a uh, landing site for tomorrow, and they're going on the back side. Obviously, you couldn't, because it was on the front side, uh, over a uh, sea of storms, uh, below the end of the He mentioned those Siakoski. It turned out we didn't shoot a lot of pictures, Jack and I did, uh, going around the moon. And the, uh, there's two major features on the back of Mars. The back side is quite different from the front. It has these large, dark areas. There's very few of those on the back side. The most prominent ones, two of them. One is Tsiolkovsky, which was an early uh, rocket pioneer in Russia. And the other one is named Sea of Moscow. Because the Russians were the first ones to get sent something around the back side of the moon. See, but you never get to see the back side of the moon here. Uh, the moon and its rotation once a month, and all these pivots to do with its rotation to keep the same size as the Earth. So the Russians got the, the naming rights and say uh, they made it around the backside the first time. So we did get some, I, I was told later by uh, some of the lunar scientists that we got some of the best angle shots of those features. I think they'll probably be making us feel good. At another point, uh, they had Ken in the simulator with a fellow that played John Aaron's role in Mission Control and the Power. Well, John, John was made the power star. Uh, he was a, the equivalent system guy on the command the side, so he really did not know the limb very well. But he was kind of the orchestra leader pulling together uh, the people uh, to develop uh, that power down. Ken was a part of that group, and it was a much larger group than two guys Ken Manning with the simulator, in fact, he's almost system experts from every system in the vehicle, and the contractor was involved in developing the, the draft uh, power down procedure. And uh, the, the, uh, it really is just another case, and I think it's somewhat an exaggeration in, in this movie, of uh, the real number of people involved. And quite frankly, looked at all the people involved and from the standpoint of uh, expertise in the telecoms uh, around the country uh, that were part of this very large program. Most people here probably don't realize that it 
peak of Apollo, uh, probably in 1968, we had over 400,000 people working on the Apollo program. Uh, we had people, if you go down to parts, uh, vendors, we had big, uh, contracts in every state and country except one of the Dakotas, uh, the south of North Dakota, we did not have a contract. So there was a very large brain trust around the country that was like, pulled on uh, for some of the things. It kind of gave the feeling of mission control that we did it all, and that was not the case. A lot of mission control did not have an instant answer in the normal world, even today on the shuttle. Uh, they don't have the instant answer. They normally write the shit up and it's handed off to the her, which is uh, acronym for mission evaluation group. And they, in turn, have the complaints all the expertise all over the country to go work the problem and come back to mission control with a response on how to handle the problem. So that's the way the system works, works today, uh, it works today in the shuttle. Uh, Ron Howard could not have afforded uh, the total gas that was involved in the working in the thing. For instance, the lithium cartridge, one more, one more thing. The lithium cartridge showed a few people around the table and they threw all the stuff in the table. And they did, it was a sort of exercise of that done because they, they knew exactly what we had on board. So from that list, they pulled out the kind of material they felt would be useful in figuring out how to work this fit. But it was carried beyond that. They actually obviously fitted one up. Uh, they put people in a chamber uh, at the Film 7 at Johnson and took them to altitude. They had a, they had a limb environmental system in there. They plugged it in the same way we would, and they tested it with human subjects. So to the extent possible, anything, uh, work around that was done in the flight, to the extent possible, they tested it on the ground. So to the extent they could, and to make sure it would work. At any rate, we'll go back uh, and see what happens. 